God, these are messed up sinners over here. <laughs> But you're gonna be dead. <laughs> I will die when I'm good and ready. Go slow, baby. What you gonna do over there in France? Be. Be what? Be in Paris, motherfucking France. <laughs> Pour that bucket over your head and get the spin. <laughs> That's not an angel gift. I don't know what it is. There's a baby in them blankets. Of course it was. What you thought? Thought you was holding blankets. <laughs>
is mm -hmm. the hardest job on Broadway. Yes. And uh, I believe that um, it had those challenges of the understudy and many more. Um, but those would be the two. My favorite would definitely be Seven Guitars, opposite Viola Davis. And Death of a Seven wouldn't be, say, the least favorite, but maybe the most ugh, agonizing one because of their responsibility and the work atmosphere. And uh, the rest of those plays were wonderful plays. It was beautiful to uh, stand by an American Sun mm -hmm. uh, uh, with, uh, you know, Kerry Washington, of course, and then to stand by for Ruben and um, uh, Stick, Stick Fly to be a part of his company in Jitney. And uh, when I get the name in my play, plays, I, I forget some. <laughs> but I think that may sum it up uh, yeah. the five that I've done on Broadway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A doubt. yeah. And I saw the, the death of the Selman you're talking about is the last one. The last one, yes. Okay. I was as uh, I was a standby for for Wendell Pierce and Andre De Shields. Yes, it's crazy. You have to learn two roles, and you yeah. have to, you're gonna play on the stage. That is very. Yeah, difficult. I mean, you have to be available in yeah. case they are not able to make it, and you step in to do it. Yes, that's the responsibility on the of the understudy. And as, like I say, Kenny Leon says, it's the hardest job on Broadway. And Kenny knows. Kenny knows. <laughs> without, a, without, a, without a doubt. Yeah. Absolutely. But when you do understudy, do you get time for rehearsal as much? Yes. As, ah, okay. Yes. There are understudies rehearsing in this theater right now for our show. All right. Perfect. It's usually two days out of the week. That's pretty good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this show we are going to talk about, you're cur currently performing the role of Reginald in the Refuge Plays by yes. Nathan Allen Davis, directed by Patricia McGregor, which is having its world premiere at Laura Pell's Theater of Broadway. Yes. It is produced by the Roundabout Theatre Company in collaboration with the New York Theatre Workshop and is going to run till November 12th. Yes. So we need to tell our viewers to go yes. see it before. November 12th. Very important. This show is amazing. Mm -hmm. Tell us about a little bit about this intriguing Fascinating play and the character you play in it. Okay, well, it's a it's 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 a journeyman story, and it's a story of a mother uh, of, uh, of uh, embracing uh, the love of her family, and that comes with many challenges. Um, it's a story uh, told in three parts mm -hmm. and three decades, but there are not they don't precede each other. It starts out in the 2000s, then it goes to the 70s, and I believe it ends in the 90s. <laughs> so, but you put it all together. It's a story of love. It's a story of family. It's a story of the guidance and the love of ancestors. It's a story of pain. It's a story of, uh, of hurt. It's a story of restoration. It's a story of redemption. It's a story of survival. Yeah. And early uh, retreats from her family to uh, a, a, a wooded place in, in the forest to begin to raise her son. Her son, never knowing his father, is on a journey to find out just who he is as a person. And so if that could be a nutshell, um, I, I I would leave it there. I do believe Mr. Uh, obviously Mr. Davis um, integrates uh, death yeah. and the resurgence of spirits um, after death. And, and you know that's that is so apropos and and so important because we do know that when we lose our ancestors, we can feel them around us sometimes, 
when we try to make decisions, we can hear their voice. Uh, and in some ways, we can hear or feel their presence. And uh, Nathan Allen Davis uh, does not shy away from uh, that possibility in this story. So it has an element, too, of the supernatural, uh, of the revisitation of ancestors. I play Reginald, who is the father of early, played by Nicole Ari Parker. And Magnificently. Magnificently. Without a doubt. And uh, and she she takes a she takes a a journey from being a, a younger woman to a middle aged woman to an older woman, and uh, who is doing an exceptional job with a most challenging role. Mm -hmm. um, I play her father, Lizanne Mitchell, the incredible, wonderful actress. My second time working with Lizanne uh, plays the mother, mm -hmm. Clydette. Um, uh, you know, we are a family, and when I speak of we, I speak of of, of uh, Reginald, Clydette, and and uh, Early. Uh, it, I always said it mirrors my mother's story in a way. My mother was given away, and she never knew who her mother and father was. In this case, uh, an, an upper middle class family uh, daughter gets pregnant at an early age, say maybe sixteen, and. Uh, because of their standard in society mm -hmm. or because of their uh, place or, you know, uh, it's an imaginary uh, facade that they have built about themselves based on their education and their economic uh, position in the world and society decides that, no, you will not bring that son here. Yeah. And, uh, and so she says, okay, I'm out of here. And it becomes a journey uh, even to find her. We don't, we do not find her as uh, living beings, but as we proceed throughout the years um, and eventually pass, mm -hmm. we come back to uh, finish the things that we were not able to finish when we were alive. You come back to watch over your family, mm -hmm. to give them advice. Yes. To help them to find themselves. Yes. And it's beautiful. It's Thank beautiful. You. Uh, you and your wife mm -hmm. come back and really give that knowledge, mm -hmm. that drop of knowledge that was absolutely fundamental for the family to get whole again. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we supply that water. I don't know how much we want to tell your audience, <laughs> but we supply that water and that light. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes. No, that, that was fantastic. That mm. was absolutely fantastic. When I saw the pump, and we don't go into details, but you got to come and see the show. That's why. <laughs> see how it all comes together. Yes. So uh, let's go to your career as a TV actor and and film. Mm -hmm. Let me just give a, a let me, if I can, Miss Maria, if I can just please give please. A, a quick shout out to uh, Nathan Allen Davis, who has written an incredible play. I, you may have, uh, and, and, and the way it's told is almost like no other. And uh, a, a few trilogy plays are, are beginning to come out uh, lately now. And he's just a passionate, incredible writer. It's just, it's, it's something to behold, to see. And Patricia McGregor, who directed these 10 actors, uh, she definitely is the glue uh, and the motivation and, 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 and the director that guided us through this journey. And uh, I cannot applaud her and uh, Nathan Allen Davis enough because the play was a heavy lift in so many ways. And what your audiences may know, in world premieres, the writer is still writing until opening night. No, so, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So you can have, you can think you have a scene, but you get new lines. It happened with us in August Wilson and Seven Guitars. It happened in, in, in other world premieres that I've been a part of. The writer is still able to write 
until opening night. Now, once opening night and it's published, then that's it. There's mm -hmm. no more writing on the play. But while you're in rehearsal, you are still going to be getting lines. And just when you thought you had a scene, it <laughs> may totally change the next day. And you were- That happened? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was happening all the time, you know. So, and 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 it happens in all world premieres. Mm -hmm. um, it, it starts with a template and uh, and it develops itself. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, the writers take cues from the actors and who they are and their journey and what they're feeling as they're watching them. And I'll never forget in Seven Guitars, um, playing out the role on stage for a world premiere in the rehearsal. And there's August Wilson sitting there writing. Oh, that's been incredible. Writing, not with a typewriter, with a pad and a pen. Oh my God. Writing 10 plays. So I wasn't there for all 10 of them, but I was there for two world premieres. And, but, uh, you know, that's what was going on. So a shout out to Nathan Allen Davis, the writer of um, The Refuge Plays and the extraordinary, wonderful uh, Patricia McGregor. The director. Um, the director. Thank you for this. This is very important. I had no idea. Uh, yes, not a doubt. That makes your work, your job much more difficult. And I suppose also a little, uh, okay, what is it going to happen tomorrow? <laughs> do I have to have the same lines or do I have to restart all over? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it could be all of that. And, uh, but, you know, um, we signed up for the assignment and it comes with the assignment, yes. <laughs> those and challenges. It's, it's challenging, but must be so satisfying when you finally come to the final version and the the opening night must be. <gasps> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's. You you know you you know it's all there you have it all there but it's uh, the anticipation and a slight pressure of just going out there uh, getting it right on opening night because yeah. that determines a lot obviously credits and things of that sort so but uh but yeah but yeah but you know some of some of us who've been in the game for a while have had those challenges and uh, we ride with it not to say that it's not a challenge anymore mm -hmm. it can always be a challenge for me around opening night and when you, you have to go out and deliver all that you have in your in your head to deliver but it is uh you take faith in the grace of god and uh boom you're you're good to go wonderful uh, um, thank you this is a a pearl that you gave me thank you so and you gave to the viewers thank you so we don't have much time left okay so let's talk about your tv you did uh, Oz, mm -hmm. All My Children, Law and Order SVU, mm -hmm. NYPD Blue, mm -hmm. and in films, you were in uh, Marvel's Wastelanders, Black Widow series, mm -hmm. People's, mm -hmm. opposite Kerry Washington. Yes. Wonderful Kerry Washington. Shaft 2000, Musical Chair, Theo Papi, and Something to Give, and mm -hmm. more. But that way. Yes. So tell us, tell us the same thing as I asked you before, the best moment and the most challenging ones. Uh, let me start with Shaft. You know, on, on, you know, we just lost Richard Roundtree. Yes. And his, he meant so much. That Shaft movie changed the atmosphere of Black actors. Uh, I mean, or uh, and, and uh, of the whole territory. So it was such an honor to be a part of a second production starring Samuel L. Jackson, who I can remember seeing on stage in uh, in Clark College in Atlanta, Georgia, before he even came here. I didn't know him at the time, but then when I came to New York, I said, "Hey, that's that guy that was in New in, in, in Atlanta." So that was a great time. And Jeffrey Wright, who plays Peoples, I had done Bus Stop with Jeffrey, and he was just extraordinary in that, mo that movie. So that was just an incredible. It was an incredible. I had a scene as the death sergeant, and that was a great time. I think it's, a, it's just historic, particularly for the Shaft franchise, 
uh, other movies I've done. Um, obviously, Peoples was wonderful, uh, being uh, uh, um, uh, Carrie Washington's, uh, she runs into one of her boyfriends and in a market is a wonderful scene. It's, I'm told, it's very funny. I, I look at it and, you know, it's. it's <laughs> And I've done T.O. Poppy and Musical Chairs, uh, my uh, probably films I most recently did in the last 10 years. And then most recently, uh, Something to Give, a short that I've done uh, with the wonderful Anise Amante, mm -hmm. an incredible, wonderful actress, and Joe Ariola, uh, director. Uh, and so television, uh, you know, coming up, uh, you know, through the ranks, I've done uh, Derek Fry on All My Children, a Chief of Police, um, uh, uh, the Correction Officer Travis Scott on Oz, spent at least uh, three years on Oz, wow. and and then New York Undercover, uh, NYPD Blue, and uh, a few others. Uh, Lights Out, uh, I did a I did a uh, an appearance on Sesame Street once. <laughs> You you know you you name one other that I um but you know all of those opportunities were 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 wonderful and great and as an actor you want to lend yourself to every opportunity that came comes and now those opportunities came for me to uh, also act in television as well and it's interesting because when I was in college I used to make my own movies so as a matter of fact I made a movie called Campus Shaft <laughs> back in the seventies and. And it was camp, uh, campus vampire. Uh, <laughs> my best buddies, Maurice Preston, had uh, you know made, and we were filmmakers around campus. So I was all about film for me in in college. And but then I did some theater in college too. I did Equus and Jesus Christ Superstar, oh. and uh, Raising in the Sun, and, and and a few other things. So, but um, but yeah, you know, I um, my television and and film career encompasses those and and in even a few more uh, the marvel uh series i did was an audio recording to an animation and and that was wonderful yeah. and i had a great time with that and just did that recently about a year ago fantastic i mean uh theater was my first love mm -hmm. so i can't imagine i just can't imagine i Amazing it must be to be on stage with all these people in front of you live mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and just perform and that get that thrill inside every time, I suppose, because it never gets old, right? It never gets old, I tell you. It comes, it still comes with its, you know, its challenges, its jitters. Yes. <laughs> but I, I'm obviously called to do it because I keep doing it. Yeah, <laughs> they, keep, they keep hiring me and I keep stepping out there. And I've done New York Theater and Regional Theater. I've done the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and the Comedy of Errors and Richard III. I've done the Old Globe in uh, Macbeth. I've done King Lear that was part of the Classical uh, uh, Theater of Harlem uh, with Andre de Shields and Ty Jones. We took King oh Lear. Oh my God, that was fantastic. Okay, you saw that too. We yeah. took King Lear to the Folgers. Uh, also, John Douglas Thompson was in King Lear as well. And so um, my state, as much as I and, and, and obviously, I thank God that my, my, my career is still going um, as much as I saw myself as the cinematic uh, actor, mm -hmm. uh, mostly I've done mostly theater and it's been really uh, just, you know, uh, an incredible, an incredible experience coming up with the ranks of in theater with Chadwick Bozeman and uh, Woody yeah. King's uh, 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 Urban Transition, Loose Blossoms by Ron Milner, uh, directed by Woody King. I can remember work with Isaiah King. Washington. Yeah, Doug King, yes, sir. King. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doubt. And it was such That's an honor to music. work with. <laughs> it was such an honor to work with Woody because I would read about him in books. And I, uh, when I was in college and I came- wow. Mm -hmm. wow. And I came to New York and I finally got to work with him. And the interesting thing, I worked with NEC and I'd worked with Broadway before I even got a chance to work with Woody King. But the destination was to work with Woody King, I tell you. And he's an incredible, incredible institution. Yes. And, and uh, a wonderful human being to, to, to our theater community and a wonderful friend. I can always call Woody and talk, wish him happy birthday. I'll just say, hey, how you doing? What's up? Yeah. So it's great. 
fantastic. I'm, I'm going to send him this interview. He's going to love it. Awesome. Last thing we need to talk about, because I want to talk about that, mm -hmm. is your screenwriting. As you mentioned before, you wrote about Jimi Hendrix before the tall. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also directed uh, The Man in Room 306. Mm -hmm. Tell us about these two experiences, please. The Man in Room 306 at the uh, theater. I at... Sorry, I don't know why the Sunday study to come out now. Oh, oh it's all good. Uh, West Orange Theater starring the incredible uh, Jamil Mangan as Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, a one-man uh, play about Dr. King's last day in Memphis before they called him to make his last speech. Yeah. Dr. King was not supposed to make that speech. That was going to be his rest day. But they said, Dr. King, can you please come out? The people want to see you. It was raining. He said, all right, I'll come out and I'll make it. Uh, that was close to my heart because I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, and I grew up about a, a block from Dr. King. We used to ride, we used to walk by his house. I never saw him, but we used to point at his house and say, that's Dr. King's house. We were walking up to uh, Atlanta University, Morehouse, uh, Mars Brown, Clark, the uh, Spellman in those areas. We used to go up there and play around the, the campuses. So that was an incredible experience. Um, you named another one. You may have to refresh my memory because I'm trying to get it yeah. all in. Um, the uh, one about the show. Oh, the screenplays. The, the screenplays. Screen plays. Yes. Uh, I, Jimi Hendrix. Yes, I have a screenplay. Jimi Hendrix has always been such a fascinating story to me. And it's amazing that even now his story hasn't been told. And my screenplay has not come uh, to fruition because there's so much more that's centered around his death. And, and so now the reality of what really happened is coming out. But I, what I realized about Jimi Hendrix, what I was hearing from people and what I was hearing from the guitar wasn't who he was. He was a gentle, almost naive, uh, we call him a perfect gentleman, mm -hmm. uh, a, a musical genius who wrote and done some incredible music. They created an image and the image became bigger than the man and the image destroyed the man. And I have always wanted to tell that story. I have that story. I have another play called, which is on Zoom, called e, uh, Electric Lady that uh, uh, features the women in Jimi Hendrix's life. I've interviewed most of most all of them, and a few have passed even in the, in the past two years. Wow. And I did one for the Oakland um, uh, Berkeley Black Rep uh, about two years ago through Rome Neal's Banana, Banana Pudding Jazz, a play called The Jimi Hendrix Experiment, where I do a one-man play about Jimi Hendrix. I speak of him in the third person. I don't play Jimi Hendrix, mm -hmm. but I did play Jimi Hendrix 20 years ago uh, and down in that the theater for the new city. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, 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 he had always been a passion uh, of, of mine in terms of who he was as a man, not just a musician. Yeah. I have another play called Augusta Brown. It's about a blind blues guitar player mm -hmm. and uh, who quits the blues and becomes a full-time pastor. There the conflict becomes with uh, his duties at home, he's always in the church and that becomes a conflict. And his brother, who comes back from New York, who has squandered his money, uh, becomes like a prodigal son who's trying to destroy his brother's life because he has ruined his. So the thing about my writing is that I, I, I'm so privileged to act so much that my writing is a little bit more of a hobby. Yes. And I think when I begin to make it first, uh, I have uh, so many wonderful stories to tell. And I hope one day uh, my Jimi Hendrix film could come to the screen. I'm sure it will, because uh, you will have to take the time to, to elaborate everything. Yes. One day, when is the time it will come? I'm going to take that and run with it. Yes. I'm gonna, it will happen. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Put it in the air. Because... Yes, yes, without a doubt. <laughs> Put it. So thank you we are at the end of our conversation. Thank you thank for you. having given us the time. Mm -hmm. Congratulations again for the refuge play. Mm -hmm. And uh, for my viewers, go see the play before Good. November 12th. Can I leave your viewers with a short message? Yes, please. You know, um, this business that we love is a small door with thousands of people trying to get in. I come from the, the journeyman generation. Uh, stay in it long enough and things will happen for you. Um, but there's a new generation that uses YouTube and every other kind of instrument to get your own story out. Continue to believe in yourself, believe in your gift, 
uh, believe in your stories, write your stories and believe they will come. Just like Miss Maria just said, put it up there. I love to uh, always encourage young people with a scripture. It says, be very confident of this one thing that God that has begun a good work in you, who has stirred up the gift in you. He's able to perform it. He's able to make it happen until the end of the world. Even after your mortal body has left this earth, your art will still begin to speak for you. So be encouraged, young people out there. Hang in there. Um, 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 know that you have a gift and present it, nourish it to give to the world. I appreciate you for listening. And I thank you, Miss Maria, for uh, you know choosing me at this time uh, to tell this story. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much for this, for giving us your time. Thank you. And thank you for our viewers. See mm -hmm. you next Saturday, 1230. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And thanks.